Hello everybody, this is the KMN 1971 back again with my weekly comic haul and this has got to be probably my priciest comic book haul and well definitely of the year. So to get on with it, um, starting off with some inexpensive books, some dollar books, Battlestar Galactica number one. I used to like this show as, as a kid. I vaguely remember it. I remember the only thing that I truly liked about it was uh, how they used to take off in their starfighters. But other than that, I don't really remember much. I remember the Cylons. I remember these ships. This is a cool Dave Cockrum cover. Uh, it was on my list. It wasn't high on my list, but for a dollar, I cannot pass it up. Also picked up Harbinger number one at another comic book shop for a dollar. Um, it's not in high demand or anything, but I, I enjoyed the Harbinger Wars. So if I can pick up these Harbinger uh, modern valiants for a dollar here and there, um, I'll do it. Why not? They're good reads. And this was a good read too. A nice updating of the Harbinger concept. All right. On to the regular long box stuff. Secret Six. Here we have a, another quote-unquote modern series. It didn't last very long, probably, I think, like three years and a couple of minis. I have the two mini series, but I never really collected the ongoing series for some reason or another, so I would like to pick it up. So I picked up number one. And number 36, which is the last issue. Went back to that other comic book shop where I've been nipping away at that guy's collection that he just bought um, probably about almost a month ago. And uh, out of his regular long boxes, I picked up a, a couple of vigilante issues here and there. I was a big fan of this when I was, you know, a tween, I guess, back in, back in the old school. So I had already quit reading Vigilante at this point, and I didn't even know that he had a, a Batman crossover. So Vigilante and Batman had to pick it up. It was only three bucks. Next couple of books here are only three dollars a piece. And this was the book that I was actually looking for. Vigilante number 50, which is the last issue of the series. And it's probably the most controversial ending ever of a, of a comic book series where you have the, the main protagonist. Um, he, he basically, spoiler alert, well, over a 30 year spoiler alert, but um, he ends up killing himself. So, pick that up. Here's something that I did not know about. Found out about it by accident, basically. This is Conan versus Rune, number one. And it's, it's not a great story or anything, but the main drawer is, if you can see at the bottom here, it is drawn by Barry Windsor Smith. And anytime Barry Windsor Smith draws Conan the Barbarian, I am in. Okay, Deadpool, The Gauntlet. This is a, a preview of um, the D Deadpool Dracula's Gauntlet miniseries, which I believe was originally a webcomic, and they ended up just making it into comic book form. And I ended up picking up the whole set. So, number one... Number two, which I, I believe this issue, now this is just my opinion, I haven't read anything about this, but this is just how I feel. I believe this is an underrated Deadpool issue, because I, I want to say this is the first comic book appearance of his wife, who has been a major character in you know, the Deadpool series now for, well, for a while, a couple of years now, three or four years. Number three. Number four, I love that cover with Werewolf by Night facing off against Deadpool. Number five. Six. And seven. This is a Deadpool miniseries that was pretty good. It gets a little... Hokey once uh, X Force gets involved, or, or rather the Thunderbolts, but um, it was pretty good. I liked it. I would I would recommend it. 
All right. This was a nice little set to pick up. Now, everyone is aware, I believe everyone's aware, of Batman The Long Halloween a maxi series that was out back in the 90s by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. And they also had the follow up of uh, Batman Doc Victory. Both highly recommended, especially if you're a Batman fan. Outstanding stuff. But prior to the Long Halloween, they had these Long Halloween one shot specials that, that came out. So I wanted to have uh, all of the Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale, uh, Batman collaborations. And you don't see these around very often. So they're not expensive, but they're kind of tough to come by, especially in, in high grade. So I want to say this is the first one, I believe. I want to say this one came out in 1992 or maybe 1993. Uh, yeah, maybe 93. I'm not sure. But that was the first one. Uh, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight Halloween Special. And here is the second Halloween special, Batman Madness. And the last one to come out before the actual miniseries, Batman Ghosts. And these, I mean, for Batman fans, I would, highest possible recommendation. Great stuff. And those are all basically cover price, I think like five bucks a piece, four bucks. Now this could be potentially a stealth buy. This is Batman number 515, and that is a pretty black cover. There you go. You can see the little embossed stuff going on there. I mean, that is Solar Man of the Atom number 10 black kind of cover. So, I guess Vin Crew and a couple of other posters have brought to well everyone's attention about these DC Universe variants. So, um, I picked this up for cover price. It was a chilling in a long box. And this is the issue where Batman finally changes his costume and gets rid of the underwear on the outside of the pants look. So, kind of an important issue that doesn't get a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pull or a lot of uh, notoriety or attention, I guess. But I, as a Batman fan, I think that's pretty important that Batman finally got with the times and uh, left the underwear at home uh, where it belongs in the drawers. So, but... I don't know what this book goes for. I don't know if it's actual cover price, what it would regular, you know, go for. But uh, with a DC Universe variant on it, I'm not sure. So if anyone knows anything about this, uh, hit me up in the comments section. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Purple Spider-Man. This is Avenging Spider-Man number six. Uh, second print variant. I guess if you get all the second prints, it would connect... Uh, would be a three-issue connecting cover. But um, this is the last issue I needed to complete the Omega effect, which was a crossover between the Punisher, Daredevil, and Avenging Spider-Man. So cool stuff. Now here's an issue that should have been in my collection years ago. Amazing Spider-Man number 229. This is the classic... Um, Spider-Man versus the Juggernaut two-parter from uh, the 1980s. So 229, awesome stuff. Once again, highest possible recommendation. 230, and while I was there, I also picked up 270, where <laughs> it's pretty unrealistic, but Spider-Man basically beats the crap out of, um, oh, who was it? Oh, a firewood. Robotech, the Macross saga, saga, number three. Now, um, a couple of, maybe about a month ago, I ended up picking up Akira, number one. And I'm not huge into anime, but there is kind of like a holy trinity of anime that I that I really enjoyed. And it was Akira, Robotech, and Ghost in the Shell. So this would be the, well, after, this was one of those uh shows that I used to watch when I'd come home after school way back when I was, you know, on the elementary level. And this was my favorite cartoon. This was the first, like, ongoing cartoon that had this ongoing storyline that just kept on progressing. And it was incredible. I really enjoyed it. So for sheer nostalgia uh, sake, this was, like, on my 80s list. 
So I pick this one up, number three. Number two. And this book used to be a ghost when I was a kid. Could never find it. Macross, number one. So, yeah, if you're ever looking for the first issue of Robotech Macross and you can't find it in the search engine, just throw in Macross Comico Comics. And um, I forget what year this came out. Let's see. I don't know. Sometime in the 80s. But highly recommended. And like I said, this issue had been on my list for a while. I paid like $20 for it. I'm not really sure if that's a good deal or not, but I'm happy with it. Uh, high grade, at least a near mint. All right. We went on to some of the better stuff. X-Force, Sex and Violence, number three, finally. I've had issues number one and two of this um, for well over a year now, and I number three just kept on eluding me. I ended up picking this up for $7. I'm fine with that. Uh, it is definitely worth it for Wolverine fans, uh, Domino fans, Gabriel Del Otto fans. His artwork is outstanding. These interiors are outstanding. I mean, I, I would highly recommend it. Once again, it's a hall of high recommendations. Fantasy Masterpieces, number one. The origin of the Silver Surfer. Um, Silver Surfer number one is, well, I would like to have it and I will own it someday. And when I do, I always like to have these reprints so I don't have to like, basically when I'll get a high end issue like that, I'll flip through it and, um, just to make sure everything's legit. But I also like to have a reprint handy at all times so I can read it when I, when I feel like it. So, uh, for when I do actually get a real Silver Surfer number one, this will be my, my reader copy. And these... Uh, like this is probably only a fine, so probably only like a, a ten dollar book. But if you get these in high grade, they're like twenty twenty dollar books. As I have said multiple times before in the past, I love a good old fashioned Hulk versus the Thing throwdown, especially if it occurs during either the Silver or Bronze Age. So, Fantastic Four number one sixty six, probably about a fine. And 167, which unfortunately, uh, it looked better in the bag. It has some creasing going on up there, but probably only a VG copy. And uh, I'm fine with that. I mean, I only paid like 2 or $3 for these books, which is an outstanding deal. Giant Size Superstars, number one, featuring the Fantastic Four. Uh, I thought this was probably going to be a reprint, but it was not. It was a totally original story, and it's basically the Hulk and the Thing do a Freaky Friday where uh, the Thing's consciousness is transferred into the Hulk's body, and the Hulk's consciousness is transferred into the Thing's body, and they just rumble throughout New York, and they end up in a in an actual boxing ring, and uh, it, it was really good. Classic Marvel Bronze Age mayhem. Awesome. Uh, probably five minus copy. I, or I would say it would, would have been a, a fine plus to very fine, but the square bounds uh, it has a little tear in the spine right at the bottom there, so it probably brings it down to a fine minus or, or a fine. Other than that, it's in great shape. Okay, Superman number one, Millennium Edition, the, the chrome foil variant. Really tough to, to come by these. Uh, I've never seen any of these in the wild. I've had to pick them all up on eBay. This one was actually a pretty good deal because the seller only had it listed as the regular Superman Millennium Edition. So he probably thought he got a, a pretty good price for this. But anytime that you can get these for, like, say, well, at least the Superman one and the Batman one, if you can get them for under, well, Batman, if you can get that under, I don't know, $40 and $50, that's a pretty good deal. Um, Superman, if you can get it under $20, that is a pretty sweet deal, too. These books are, I don't know, they're not in high demand right now, but I can see as the years go on, because they are so tough to keep in good condition, and I don't know how many copies were made for these foil variants, but now I have three out of the five. I still need the All-Star Comics foil variant, and, of course, the, the big one, the, the Crisis on Infinite Earths, number one, which, I don't know. 
I'll have to find that one at a deal because I just do not want to pay $80 for that comic. A little anniversary issue here, Marvel Premiere, number 50. Uh, just another one of those books that used to be in all the house ads in the Marvel comics from my, from my childhood. And I've never seen this one out and about. It's the first appearance of Alice Cooper. I'm not a big Alice Cooper fan, but I, I mean, I love all kinds of music. I love um, rap, rap, rock, reggae, punk. Um, but uh, my, my love for music started with, with classic rock. So Alice Cooper does have some classic rock songs, and um, I thought this was cool to pick up for the price. It was only $5, so couldn't leave it there. This is just an awesome variant. Hate the art on the inside, but this is just such a cool variant. Silver Surfer number two from the 2016 series. Oh, I forget the, uh, I forget the artist's name brain fart right now sorry but i would highly recommend this this goes for i have no idea what this went for i just picked it up because it was ten dollars at newberry comics been sitting around there since for well over a year in their um variant bins so uh when i looked it up online the last two sales went be, uh, goes between like 25 and 35 dollars so i picked it up for 10 <laughs> and like i said that is just an awesome cover that's just uh it's pretty original i mean artists are obviously original uh, thinkers, but that is just a, just a, such an awesome concept to have with the Silver Surfer uh, with the surfboard being kind of like a lozenge and uh, checking uh, Galactus's tonsils. That's awesome. Last week I showed off um, How Would the Duck number one, and this week this one fell into my lap. Adventure into Fear, number 19. First appearance of How Would the Duck. So, I'm not a huge How With The Duck fan, but I love all these Bronze Age first appearances. And, uh, why not, right? So, it was like 30 bucks. I want to say very fine. I don't know if this little date stamp right in the middle of the T would bring it down or not. But, great, great copy. Now, for the book that put me over budget this year, this week. But, sometimes you got to spend the cash... Fantastic Four, number 48, CGC 5.5, the first appearance of the Silver Surfer. This is something that I would categorize as a grail. Um, there are grails, uh, I mean, I, I know everyone categorizes grails uh, differently. I mean, for me, there's like a, a periphery of grails. There are the unattainable grails of like Action Comics, number one, Detective Comics 27, Amazing Fantasy, number 15. And then there are the attainable grails, expensive but attainable, like, say, Incredible Hulk 181, Green Lantern 75, Amazing Spider-Man 129, and this Bad Larry right here, Fantastic Four, number 48, first appearance of the Silver Surfer. I have wanted this for a very, very, very long time, and it uh, popped up on eBay at a good price. I'll, I'll tell you what I paid for. I paid, well, I think it's a good price. I paid 400 and... Uh, like eight dollars shipping so uh, now I don't usually buy this is only my second slab book in my collection I don't usually go for slab books but especially with Silver Age um, even though I've been collecting a while I am NOT um, a grader I'm not a professional grader so I would not be able to tell if this book was touched up or you know anything done with it and that would be something if I'm gonna spend this kind of money uh, on a book I would like to uh, have that, you know, so it wouldn't be, like, eating away at my self-conscious. So, very happy to pick this up. Um, this will probably be my last haul for probably, I don't know, three, four weeks until... I, I have a set, um, uh, a set amount of money that I put aside every week because this is just a hobby and you can get carried away very easily. So, this is, this, this is money that I will... Um, I will hold back from doing like back issue hauls now for like three or four weeks to accommodate for the cash that I spent for this. I still have like 300 left that I have to pay on my PayPal account for it. So, yeah, and I still have to buy a car within the next like two or three weeks. So, I will be holding off on the comic book hauls. I'll still be doing videos though. I'll, I'll go back to my comic book, uh, comic book collection spotlight vids and show off all my Marvel keys, my magazines, OGNs, and you know, definitely still be making videos. But very happy to pick this up. I usually pick up like two or three 
big comics a year, and this was my number one book that I wanted this year. So, um, yeah, that's all I have. I hope you all enjoyed this. I'll be back next week with a, a comic to uh, restart my comic book sp uh, collection spotlight videos. And hopefully I will be totally geeked out after watching um, Logan uh, next Saturday. I am totally psyched for that, man. Cannot wait. All right. Everybody out there, have a great week. Thank you for all my old subscribers, new, new subscribers. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting. And uh, yeah, have a great one out there, everyone. Take it easy.